Hello ease BO5, Principles of Soil Science. Welcome to the field lecture. Today here we are on the Oak Ridges Moraine, which is a prominent feature in the Northern Toronto landscape. Created approximately 14,000 years ago by two glaciers, this area, this moraine, is characterized by deposits of sand and gravel. Now specifically, I'm here in Durham Forest, and Durham Forest uh, is a tract of land that has patches of old growth forest, abandoned agricultural regions, and newer plantations. Now some 200 years ago, the old growth forest in this region was liquidated for timber as well as for conversion to agriculture. And the agriculture in this region was highly unsuitable for this type of parent material. And because of this, the agriculture was abandoned and underwent soil degradation and subsequent mass soil erosion. This led to newly exposed parent material that we can see here, as well as uh, new wind erosion deposits termed the blow sands. And that's what I'm standing on here today are these exposed blow sands. Now this region in Durham Forest really gives us a unique opportunity to explore soil horizon development. What we have here is a mosaic of different land uses. We have these old tracts of old growth forest. We have this exposed parent material and we have some newer plantations. And this gives us an opportunity to see how a soil goes from a non-soil through soil profile development and soil horizonation to a fully developed soil luvisol, the soil order soil luvisol. So what we're gonna see today is a non-soil and then we're going to see three soil orders in the Canadian system, a Rigasol, a Brunasol, and a Luvasol. And we're going to use this space in Durham Forest as a chrono sequence. So we're going to use the space for time, and we're going to move to different areas and see how these soil profiles develop. So to start, we're here on our non-soil, or the exposed parent material. And as we've learned from class, this parent material is calcareous, or a CK. And to diagnose that calcareous nature of this parent material, we add a weak acid to the material to see the effervescence or the reaction with the calcium. So here we are with our exposed parent material. And we can, if we dig down, we can see that we have no soil horizon development. This is all the C horizon or the CK horizon. And to confirm this CK horizon, we're gonna add a weak acid and look for the reaction with the carbonates in the soil. And we can see at the bottom part, we have strong effervescence indicating that CK horizon. And we can even see this reaction near the soil surface. So we know that there's no horizon development. We have a uniform horizon here identified as CK. So this is a non-soil. So we've left our non-soil or exposed parent material and we've moved into this region of Durham Forest which has some vegetation growing. And Imagine we've now moved ahead in time by a few thousand years even, and we've started to see the growth of plants and the accumulation of organic material on the surface of the parent material. This organic material then starts to decompose, and these additions, which is one of our soil horizonation processes, become translocated, another soil horizonation processes, down into the soil profile these organic acids move into the parent material and start to create a new horizon termed the AH horizon. Now this AH horizon is characterized by high levels of organic material that are highly decomposed and mixed with the mineral soil. And here we can see our AH horizon and this AH horizon then sits directly on top of our CK horizon. Now again, let's confirm that CK horizon into the shade by adding our dilute acid and confirming that we indeed have a CK horizon. Yes, we do. So here we have an AH horizon followed by a CK. 
So it's missing the B horizon. And this is the diagnostic characteristic of a rigosol. A rigosol is characterized by the lack of a B horizon. So we go directly from a developing a H horizon to a CK horizon, a rigosol. What else I can show you here is soil structure. Now we can see here in the AH horizon some very clear granular structure. We have four soil structures that we use to characterize soils, granular being one of them, which is often in the AH horizon, which are these small balls or clusters of organic material in the AH horizon. We can also see another type of structure down here in the C horizon, which is our block-like structure. And we can see how the soils form into these block-like structures down in the CK horizon. Now again, here we've gone from our non-soil or exposed parent material to the development of an AH horizon and a CK horizon termed a Rigasol soil. And now we're gonna move on to another area of Durham forest to look at the next soil order in our chrono sequence. Here we are in a new part of Durham Forest. As I mentioned previously, this region went through high levels of deforestation and conversion into agriculture. And that agriculture was subsequently abandoned and those soils went through high levels of degradation. In the early 1900s, uh, this region was uh, then planted with red pine. Uh, red pine is a drought tolerant species and it was planted in, throughout this region as a form of soil conservation, as a way to hold the, those blow sands in place and start transforming that soil with the additions of organic matter. And with those plantations, we saw a rapid acceleration of the Rigasol soils into the next soil order in our chrono sequence, which is a Brunasol. And like our Rigasol, we have an AH horizon, which is characterized by high levels of organic matter mixed with the parent material. And below that AH horizon, we have a developing B horizon. And this B horizon is characterized by a small accumulation of clays in that B horizon. Now, why do these clays accumulate in the B horizon? As the organic acids start to wash or translocate into the AH horizon, they start to disperse the clays within that horizon. Those clays then translocate down the soil profile and when they come in contact with the calcium in the CK horizon, that calcium then flocculates those clays. And so those clays accumulate in that B horizon. Here in a Brunasol, those clays are just starting to flocculate in that B horizon and we can start to see the difference in the color between the AH and the BM horizon. Deep down in this soil profile, we will find our parent material, our CK horizon. So what we have here is our AH horizon characterized by organic material, a BM horizon which is a developing B horizon with some accumulation of clays and our characteristic CK horizon developed on this specific parent material. So we have AH, BM, CK, the soil order Brunasol. So here we are at our final soil order, the Luvisol. We've so far seen the non-soil, and then we moved into the Rigasol, which is a young soil order, and then into the Brunasol, which is that maturing B horizon. And now finally here we are in a tract of old growth forest in Durham Forest, and here we can see the original soil profile development. So this soil profile has been developing for uh, centuries and centuries. 
and it's very deep into the soil and has lots of different soil horizons because it's had so long for those soil horizonation processes to occur. So the first uh, soil horizon that we have here, and we're gonna just ignore this top little bit for a moment, I'll come back to that, is we have our AE horizon, or AH horizon, characterized by organic material. Now new in the Luvasol is we have an AE horizon. This AE horizon is our alluviated horizon. This is where we have a lot of the clays being dispersed. So we have the organic matter and organic acids and salts washing or translocating into the soil profile. They're picking up uh, clays in the AH horizon and in the AE horizon and washing those clays through dispersion down in the soil profile. Those clays are then reaching the calcium and carbonates of the CK horizon and they're flocculating together. So the AE horizon or the alluviated horizon has a lack of clay. It is also characterized by plate-like structure, which we can see here. We can see those small plates in this AE alluviated horizon. Below the AE horizon, we have the BT horizon. That BT horizon is characterized by the flocculation of clays into that BT horizon. The T of the BT horizon indicates texturized. So it has an accumulation of clays that have been flocculated by the calcium in the CK horizon and having an accumulation of clays that have been alluviated out of the AE horizon. Finally, we have our CK horizon. The CK horizon is that horizon of the parent material characterized by high levels of calcium carbonates deep down in the soil profile. So we have an AH horizon, an AE horizon, a BT horizon, and a CK horizon. This BT horizon is the diagnostic feature of Aluvasol. Aluvasol is characterized by an alluviated A horizon, an accumulation or flocculation of clays in the BT horizon. So as you can see here in our Luvasol, I took the AH, the AE, the BT, and the CK from this portion of the soil profile. Above this, we see more soil. And this is very interesting. What's happening here is that because of a lot of that erosion on the Oak Ridges Moraine, we had a lot of wind deposits of parent material on top of this very old Luvasol. And so above this AH horizon, we have a deposition of CK. This CK has been blown in because of soil erosion. And on top of the CK, we have an accumulation of organic material, which is our AH. So in fact, we have a rigosol. There's a very small rigosol characterized by a lack of a B horizon that is sitting on top of this luvasol. So on top here, we have our AH horizon. Again, a new AH horizon. And below that AH horizon, we have a CK horizon. So, in fact, we have the deposition of new parent material and the development of an AH horizon on top of this very old Luvasol. When we have this occur, we use the subscript B, B for buried. So this Luvasol, in fact, is a buried horizon. So if we look down at our soil profile, we have the AH, the new AH horizon on top of the Rigasol with the freshly deposited CK horizon. The CK horizon we can diagnose with the addition of a weak acid and see the effervescence in reaction to the calcium carbonates. Then we have our buried AH horizon, a buried AE horizon, 
a buried BT horizon, and a buried CK. So to recap, we have AH, CK, AHB, AEB, BTB, and CKB.